and welcome back to 30 at 6 on Cecil TV. Today is Monday, October 15th. I'm Allison Donnelly. And I'm Rob Churnside. And Allison, I am so glad to be here. Coming up on Halloween. Right. The fall weather is finally here. Fall weather is finally here. All the, hopefully all the bugs will die off. Right. And hopefully we'll start seeing some Halloween decorations in our inbox. Well, we've got a few interesting uh, entries already. Yes. For Let's, let's review the details of yeah, this contest. Yeah, let's just go over how to submit an entry to Cecil TV's first annual spooky decor competition. So, say you've got some awesome decorations set up at your house. Of course. You, of, of course, I know you do. Um, you enter our competition by taking a 15 second video, just walk around the house. If that's too much, take some pictures, send them to info, Oh, did you want me to go slower than that? Yeah, look, 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 see? Just push the button and take yep. the picture on your phone. Yes. And then you can email them to info at cecil.tv, and we will consider all of the entries that we receive, and the winner will, the resident, residential household winner will win the great prizes we've gotten so far from Lowe's, Granite Run, and Northeast Chocolates. And the business winner will receive a 15-second um, still ad on our show. Nice. Like a free commercial, kind of. That's pretty yeah. cool. So, folks, get out there and submit those entries. And perhaps next week we might even give you a, a little glimpse of some of the competition. Yeah. That would be great. You can win. And now for the news. Last Saturday evening, a white 2015 silver Honda Odyssey, operated by Robert Malinowski, 47 years old, of Earlville, was traveling eastbound in the left lane of Route 40 when it struck a pedestrian. The pedestrian was identified as 32-year-old Lauren Bruska of Horsham, Pennsylvania. Ms. Bruska was transported by Maryland State Police Aviation Medevac to the University of Maryland Medical Center shock trauma in Baltimore, where she later succumbed to her injuries. It is unknown if alcohol is a factor in the incident at this time. Anyone with additional information regarding the collision is asked to please contact the Maryland State Police Northeast Barrack at 410-996-7800. Election day is November 6th. Early voting begins Thursday, October 25th and runs through Thursday, November 1st. Voters throughout Maryland have many choices to make in the ballot box, including two proposed constitutional amendments. The first would require the governor's budget to pro provide supplemental state funding for public education through commercial gaming revenues. In 2008, Maryland voters approved a constitutional amendment to permit video lottery terminals and to allocate proceeds to support public education programs. This year's measure would require those commercial gaming revenues to supplement rather than substitute other state funding for education. The second proposed constitutional amendment would allow individuals qualified to vote in Maryland to register and to vote on Election Day. Currently, Maryland law requires voter registration to close before Election Day. More to come on those topics next week. And this from the Department of Natural Resources. After a three-day pursuit, the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, Wildlife and Heritage Service, with assistance from the Maryland Natural Resources Police, successfully tranquilized a 100-pound male black bear cub to remove a plastic jar that was stuck around its head. The rescue cub, affectionately known as Buckethead, was freed near the Wisp Resort in McHenry during the autumn, annual Autumn Glory Festival. The crowd was very happy to see the cub safely handled and reunited with the sow and another cub. Wildlife and Heritage Service Director Paul Pedito said, our response staff did an outstanding job dealing with this very public situation and handled it in a most professional and responsible manner. And now for a word from our sponsors. Oh, oh no, the furnace is on the fridge again. This time I'm calling the moon. <laughs> wow, he's here already? At your service. There you go, mission accomplished. Ah, ah, our house is nice and warm again. again. Thanks, Moon Man. You're awesome. You're welcome. Just go to moonairinc.com. Pull out of this world service, moonairinc.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Sam Charles. 
For 30 years, I have been practicing functional medicine and gentle chiropractic. Elkton Chiropractic Neurology is dedicated to enhancing whole body rejuvenation. Whether or not you are afflicted with injury or disease, we utilize a structural, neurologic, metabolic, nutritional, and energetic approach to restoring your body to its full potential. After coming to Dr. Charles, I'm better than I was before. You deserve to feel good and to have an active lifestyle, so why not call Elkton Chiropractic Neurology today? Hello, I'm Allison Donnelly for Cecil TV. This morning we took a tour of Gilpin Manor Elementary School, and I'm here with Principal Kesia Neesmith. How are you this morning? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. So I wanted to ask you how the school year is going in the brand new building. It's been fabulous. We've had a great start to the school year. Our teachers and our staff members and our students came together to make sure that we were ready to open on time, and we just had, have had a great start to the school year. What are the highlights of this new building? Oh, there's so many. Uh, we have our integrated arts room, which is really special. It has a rubber floor and a window, a door that can open and have uh, students see a performance if necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, we can close that area off. Our media center is beautiful. It's very open and spacious. It uh, has lots of new books in there. And uh, in particular, our uh, gym and cafeteria area, our stage is able to open up so we could uh, broadcast on both sides. Uh, we can... Uh, just have many students come in at one time. We can show movie night on both sides. It's really great. Why do you think this is important and beneficial for students and faculty alike? Well, this new building has really been helpful to our school culture. Uh, we are moving from a older building, which was quite dark in some places, and the, just the light itself has really helped. Uh, our students are proud of their school and our teachers as well. And so we've really come together to take care of our school, take care of our community, and take care of ourselves. So it's really been a positive culture change for our school. Yeah, you can tell just walking around here, everyone's, everyone's very happy to be here. Yeah. So why do you think a brand new, beautiful elementary school is a great thing for Elkton? Well, in particular, we consider ourselves to be a community school, and so we're located uh, right on 279 between uh, Elkton Middle School and Elkton Library. So we are going to have a pathway from the library all the way to the middle school. And so we welcome families and community members into our school. Uh, we have a number of programs where we have some uh, partnerships with uh, Union Hospital, with Children's Guild, Upper Bay, uh, and also the library. So it's a really a great place for us to come together as a community. Uh, we have spaces in the building for community members to use, and we also have a number of programs here. So we have an infants and toddlers program. Uh, parents in the community can get support for their students, and we have the Parent Resource Center for Cecil County here. So we have a lot of uh, resources here and we're really welcoming the community into our building. Great. Here with Principal Kesia Neesmith, I'm Allison Donnelly for Cecil TV at Gilpin Manor Elementary School. Welcome back to 30 at 6. I'm here with Caroline Borchers. She's a Rising Sun resident and a member of the Black Fly Action Committee here in Cecil County. Thanks so much for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So what are black flies? Well, so that's a really interesting question. A lot of times we're finding that um, people hear black flies and they think of the big black house flies. House flies, yeah, yeah. That, are, that are in your house and that you, you keep the fly swatter on mm -hmm. hand for. Um, and so I think a more appropriate name for these are, would actually be like biting black fly gnats. Okay. Um, they're very small and they bite. <laughs> it's, it's quite unpleasant. So um, basically these things breed in fast moving rivers like mm -hmm. the Octorero. And um, then they kind of come out of the river and they find food sources, which which is, is blood. So, um, you know, if you go out in your yard and you're finding that you're kind of constantly swat swatting these bugs away from your face and you have bugs flying in your ears and your eyes and your nose, um, you probably have these yeah. black fly gnats. Right. Is that um, how it came to your attention that the, this was an issue? Absolutely, yeah. So when I moved to Rising Sun about two years ago, um, we actually purchased our house in February. It was when we put the offer mm -hmm. in. So by the time spring had rolled around, right. we were we were well on the way towards closing um, and started noticing these things. And I will say, um, you know, I think other residents of the area have been dealing with these for many years. Mm -hmm. But we all have kind of noticed, just in the two years that I've been in Rising Sun, the problem getting worse. Really? Yeah. So 
like one example of that is when I first when we first purchased our house, it was kind of just in the yard that mm -hmm. we would notice this. You'd go out in the grass and you'd within a few seconds probably be like, you know, swatting these right. things away. Um, and this past year we noticed that, you know, even coming onto our driveway, they'd be a problem. They'd right. follow us into our garage. Wow. Whereas before, like that was kind of like if you were on paved paved you know, ground, you mm -hmm. were kind of safe. Right. <laughs> so, um, so it's definitely becoming worse. So. so so what is the impact on residents besides the, obviously, the annoyance? Right, right. So, you know, when they bite, um, it's painful, it's itchy. The area can swell up and get inflamed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I myself have been bit a few times. It seems that also seems to be getting worse in, right. in frequency. Um, but it's just, you know, it's really difficult to enjoy your property when yeah. you're being kind of accosted by <laughs> hundreds of little black bugs. Um, one of the things about Cecil County that's really nice is it's it's really beautiful out here. We have some beautiful scenery and nature. Right. And, and you want to enjoy your, exactly, your property. Exactly. Uh, you know, a lot of members of the group have likened it to being kind of a prisoner in your own home. Mm -hmm. um, we've found that these things are becoming an issue kind of from April solid through until October, which wow. is a good part of the year. I mean, yeah. that's and then the rest of the year is cold and you're in your house then too. So right. yeah, it makes it difficult to, to enjoy being outside for sure. So what can be done about it? Yeah, so there actually there's a very simple treatment. It's called BTI and it's a naturally occurring bacterium um, that can be put into the waterways. It basically attacks the larva of um, mosquitoes, these black flies. I think there's one other kind of gnat that it attacks, but it, other than that, it's it's very benign. Mm -hmm. um, it it doesn't harm other w wildlife. It's not you know people hear treatment and they think pesticides and chemicals and you know I personally am not one to use that kind of stuff on my property. I don't I don't want to be dumping right. poison <laughs> into yeah. into our property um, into our, our our landscape. So um, it's really nice to know that there's something that's that's natural that can be used to to uh, to solve the issue. Um, so I, I know this has been implemented in other counties in the state. What's standing in the way of that being implemented here? So that's a great question. So actually right to the north of us in Pennsylvania, they've been using this program to treat this issue for 30 years. Wow. So we know we know it's effective. Mm -hmm. We know it's safe. I mean, there's, you know, there's a, a history of, of success here. Um, more recently, in just the last couple of years, there's been some other counties in Maryland that have started pilot programs. Um, so that's a good question, what's standing in the way. You know, I think um, people are starting to become more aware of mm -hmm. the issue in Cecil County and really trying to bring it to the attention of our politicians. Right. Um, but really kind of the ball's in their court, you know, so. So what can other folks who are watching who, who live near you or live in other parts of the county who, where they, they've noticed this and not known what to do about it, what, how can they get involved? Yeah, so absolutely. So we have a, uh, a Black Fly Action Committee that meets, we've been meeting kind of every other week currently. Our next meeting is gonna be Wednesday, October 17th at 6.30 p.m. Okay. We're actually hosting that at Spring, Spring Hill Manor. Um, they've been kind enough to, to give us the facilities because we're actually having a guest come up from Washington County to speak. Oh. Uh, she's been involved in getting the pilot program started down there and some of the bills that she's that have been passed and she's trying to get a bill passed currently. So mm -hmm. she's coming up to talk to our group and kind of um, garner support and right. camaraderie, if you will. Yeah. Um, so we would encourage anyone who's interested to to come out and attend that. Also, we have a website. It's uh, blackflyaction.org. Okay. And there you can go. You can find out more about you know the problem you can find out more about the treatment options mm -hmm. we have a uh, digital copy of a petition letter that can be signed um, we are kind of collecting signatures to right. give to the politicians there's information about how to contact your representatives there's I mean pretty much anything that you could you could want to know is is on that site so that's definitely a great resource for someone who's interested and wants yeah. to get involved well that's great Thanks so much for being here. Thank you so much for having us. Welcome back to 30 at 6. Heather Lynette Sinclair is running for Maryland State Senate in District 36. This is the seat currently held by Se Senator Steve Hershey. It includes Southern Cecil County, Queen Anne's, Kent, and Caroline counties. We should note before we get started that we've reached out to Senator Hershey's campaign and we're working on organizing an interview with him. 
Heather, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little about your background. Um, about six years ago, I went into therapy and I wanted to address some of the issues uh, that I was having at mm -hmm. um, my late 20s, um, one of them being depression. Uh, my history, my childhood history, I grew up in severe poverty, domestic violence, um, and I'm also a juvenile um, sex trafficking survivor. Mm -hmm. So I was trafficked right here um, in Maryland from 16 to 18 years old, and I never really dealt with any of those issues um, until after I was married and I had children, and um, I started to realize that it was eating me from the inside out. So I went into therapy, and um, at first it started working out really well for me, and then about two months in, I started to realize that some things were not right. Um, a couple of months after that, I was sexually assaulted by my therapist. Wow. Um, so when I went to report him, I found out he was a violent convicted felon um, who had spent four and a half years in prison for aggravated assault on a child. So my first question was, how did, how did a violent felon get a license to be a therapist in the first place? That's a great question. Um, so when um, I started doing my homework and I realized that Maryland was not requiring criminal background checks for mental health professionals, um, and they were also not requiring them for medical doctors. So I contacted, um, I believe the delegate at that time was Delegate Mike Schmiegel, who mm -hmm. is the former delegate from 36. Right. Um, I contacted him and he put in a bill for criminal background checks and it passed the first year. Um, and after that, after seeing that, that I made a difference, there's just really nothing like it. So really, I think I started out wanting to just change a few things to protect people. Mm -hmm. um, and the other bill was to make it a crime for when a mental health professional sexually harasses or sexually exploits a patient during treatment. That is um, already a crime in 31 states, but it is not a crime in Maryland. Wow. Um, so once I realized that was not a crime, because my former therapist never faced any criminal um, prosecution whatsoever. As a matter of fact, he was allowed to surrender his license to mm -hmm. avoid uh, criminal charges. Right. And that's pretty common, what I found out in my research, um, is that it's really common and it's really common across the country. So that kind of put me on my journey of, wow, this needs to change. Um, and I put out a website and as soon as I did that, I was contacted by thousands and thousands of people just like me um, mm -hmm. who had experienced um, healthcare professionals who had violent records, um, or they had been harmed by a professional, um, whether physically harmed or sexually, uh, and nothing was ever done. It stayed at the licensing level. So I was able to uh, put in legislation in multiple states, in Delaware, in Virginia, in West Virginia, and a couple of other, on the other in the middle mm -hmm. of the country, um, as well as Maryland, and um, some of them passed and some of them didn't. So. That was how I got started was, um, I guess you could say that I was a victim. And I, I was an angry victim. I wanted to know how this happened to me. And so I just, what, what compelled you to run for office? Um, th that, I think, because um, it took me, the, the one bill, Lynette's Law, still has not passed in mm -hmm. Maryland. It did pass in West Virginia in 2016. So I've had success in multiple states in being able to pass um, health care bills. And along with that, um, I, lobbying in Annapolis, it's, it's totally different than, than someone would think, um, but lobbying in Annapolis gave me a front row seat to how the legislature really works versus mm -hmm. how you're taught that it works. Right. Um, so in that process, I started learning about of a lot of different issues and a lot of different um, bills that were going through the legislature. And from my life experience, I saw things that we were not getting right. Um, a lot of the bills uh, that dealt with the homeless population, for example, because I was homeless. Um, so I have experience there, and I was seeing some of these bills passed with the homeless population that weren't necessarily effective. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing again with uh, trafficking, which has now become a very political issue. Um, so again, I think we're doing, we're, we're still getting it wrong. Mm -hmm. And just from my experience, um, both personal experience and legislative experience, what I got to see was we, we pass a lot of feel-good bills right. for, for elections rather than passing them and getting them done right the first time. So to switch gears just a bit, why do you believe that you're a better choice for voters in, in our district than, than the incumbent, Senator Hershey? Um, I think I'm the better choice because I don't think we have great representation in, in Annapolis for this district. I don't think we have had it for some time. 
Um, you know, Senator Hershey on a personal level, I'm sure he's a really great guy. Um, but as far as being a senator, he is not effective. So usually, um, and Senator Hershey, it's not just Senator Hershey, but usually elected officials do not post bills. They do not post votes. They do not post um, anything to give voters information about how they vote on things mm -hmm. um, or their bills. For example, um, his I've pulled up a lot of his bills. I've pulled up all of his uh, voting records. He's not effective. What do you mean when you say that? Um, he cannot get legislation passed. The biggest ones um, are funding. So he cannot bring in funding uh, to the district. So he's been elected since 2010. I think that's quite a long time uh, for him to establish relationships and build a rapport and, and what's called political capital mm -hmm. um, to be able to pass legislation re you know, regarding funding. So he hasn't been totally uh, ineffective. The majority of his bills that pass are, are alcohol related, which is great, it's fine. I have nothing against you know, alcohol bills with this district is you know right now this district in particular is facing a a huge opioid uh, ep epidemic right. um, so we need focus there and we need funding uh, for that issue okay thank you <laughs> thanks so much so the election day is november 6th early voting begins october 25th and now ladies and gentlemen cecil county and the world it's time to talk music on 30 and 6. My good buddy, Rick Napolsky. Hey, Rob. Welcome to 36. Thank you. It's good to be here. We're going to talk about your music, your okay. new CD you just finished a little while ago, uh, some of your gigs that I happened to see you a little while back, and you got yeah. something coming up. Yes, sir. So what is it you exactly do? I know you play guitar. I uh, play guitar and sing. We do a lot of blues, some classic rock, a uh, few originals. You know, I try to throw those in as much as I can. Right. And you're local, too, right? You're from Cecil County. Uh, I'm living right down in the Northeast. Okay. So, good. Yeah. yeah. And uh, my wife and I happen to see you and your band, refresh my memory. The Wobbly Cats. The Wobbly Cats. <laughs> uh, that's, that's just, we'll nice. talk about that. <laughs> but we saw you at Creole de Grawl down there yes. in uh, Havery yeah. Grace a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Great place. Played some nice music, some good blues. Oh, it was well you. received. Yeah, had a great time. The food was good. Ah, oh, food's excellent. The drinks were cold. Well, from what I hear, I don't, you know. Yeah, I, I know. I know you're <laughs> the kind of guy you are, right? Yeah. <laughs> and a good time was had by all. Yes. It's kind of good time music. Yeah, I think so. So you have a new CD, right? Yes, sir. And it's all original. Yep. Uh, eight original songs. Nice. And you maybe will grace us with uh, one of those tunes tonight? That would be fine, yeah. I'd enjoy that. Typical blues fare? Or? Uh, no, it's a pretty good mix. There's some blues in there. And then uh, you call it kind of a folk rock kind of sound. So where are you playing coming up, Rick? I'm playing Saturday, the 20th. It's coming Saturday at uh, Paradox Winery. Uh, it's on Flint Hill Road right in Landenburg. Paradox. Paradox. And it's actually owned by a Paradox. By right? a Paradox, yes. How about that? Yeah. And they make their own wine. They and make their own wine. Uh, yeah, it's going to be Ladies' Day. Ladies' Day. So, yeah, so there will be vendors and food trucks and, you know. And that's this Saturday, this Saturday October 20th. 20th. What uh, what's the time frame on that? One to four. So you would just go up Route 896? Uh, yeah. And follow the signs. There you go. And I'm use your phone to put yeah, Paradox your, you Winery go. in there. Use your GPS. Cool. Yeah. So now, tell, tell us about the Wobbly Cats. Uh, How'd you get that name? Uh, I got the name. I have uh, two cats with cerebellar hypoplasia, which is uh, their cerebellum isn't quite developed enough. So they take three or four steps. They might fall over. They might make a sharp left turn. You know, so the syndrome is called wobbly kitten syndrome or wobbly cat syndrome. Okay. So I was talking with my one cat, Marley, and he said I should name the band after him. So do you have to pay Marley, like, royalties or anything like well, that? Well, it was going to be Marley and the Wobbly Cats, right. but he wanted royalties, so we cut his name yeah, out, yeah, just yeah. kept the Wobbly Cats. Yeah. Seems like you could get your lawyers to talk to the cats' lawyers. and maybe He's got cats. better lawyers than me, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I'll tell you what. The Wobbly Cats are worth seeing. Uh, Thank you. Check out. You're good playing solo at Paradox, right? Playing solo at Paradox, yes. Well, we look forward to hearing you play solo tonight. Excellent. Let's do it. Sounds good. Thanks, sir. Thank you, Rob. Hi, uh, my name is Rick Napolsky. I'm going to play one of my originals off my new CD. It's a song called uh, Kelly's Happy Song. 
she said I wrote a lot of miserable, dreary, dark songs and asked me to write a happy one. So this is what I came up with. Everything. 